my family and I once visited Lake Galilee and we went to the place where it said the Sermon on the Mount actually took place. It has a church there, a modern church, a visitor, a visitor centre, and it looks out over the beautiful, special lake. What a really special place it is. And when there was a bit of a lull in the crowds and people had moved on, I decided to climb up on a low wall that overlooked the paved courtyard and read from the Sermon on the Mount in the Bible. Well, I would never have done it if with the crowd there. I'd have been far too nervous. I certainly didn't do any public speaking back then. And not being a gifted public speaker, I was really focused on the words of the text, particularly as I was reading from the King James Bible, which can be a bit tricky in places. And after about 10 minutes of, of reading, I lowered my Bible and I prepared myself to receive the respectful and appreciative and thoughtful nods of my wife and son and daughter, only to suddenly be met with the collective stare of a coachload of Korean pilgrims, all silent, staring up at this strange man reading on a wall. But how God can use all of us, even in our weakness and our ignorance. But public speaking though, yuck. Imagine you're attending a large conference. Maybe it's to do with your work or perhaps it's a Christian conference, new wine or spring harvest, something like that. And it's just about time for the public speaker to stand up and address the auditorium. Expectations are high. There's been a gradual build up, notices, introductions, perhaps some singing, and then hush descends. Well, the speaker steps up onto the stage, walks to the lectern, opens notes, puts them in order, takes a sip of water, draws breath. All this signals that here is something special to listen to. And the keynote speech begins. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. When Jesus addresses the crowd to teach the disciples at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, he's signalling as clearly as he can that a freak wave has come in Jesus, that the ship of Judaism has turned upside down. With his coming into the world, everything has changed. All the values that were held as important have been turned on their head. These beatitudes reflect that, that upside down nature. This is upside down living. Or rather, it's living the right way up, God's way up, in an upside down world. Let's all be a part of that upside down kingdom together. Amen.